so this video is going to be about tarantula enclosure tutorial and where to buy them. So you want to buy your first tarantula. So there's pretty much three places that you can buy. You can either buy them in local pet stores. I guarantee you they won't have very interesting species, but they do have. Um, I've seen very common rose hairs. I've seen. Mexican red knees, cobalt blues, pink toes, and maybe the uncommon red rump, um, and orange baboon. So if you want to get the really interesting species like I have, you know, like the Columbian giant red leg, the horned baboon, uh, the feather leg baboon, you would have to go on to online dealers, so to your country. So let's say in Canada, since we're close to the U.S., we can't buy or sell RTs to the U.S. border because we require a fish and wildlife permit, and that's just too much money if unless you're really into buying large shipments. So I would say the application is about $100, and you can be accepted or rejected, then you have some X amount. So let's say if you buy a couple tarantulas, maybe a small shipment, um, a month, the taxes behind it are going to over exceed the price of a tarantula and it's just not worth it. So what I'll do is I'll post on the video description a couple of websites that are pretty good as far as tarantula dealers are concerned. And also, you can also check on arachnoboards and you can check the classified, see if they have any for sale um, species coming up and they have good prices. Okay, so now a tutorial of my enclosures. So the enclosures are cages or vivariums. So I'll show you what you could buy and what you can buy. So let's do that. <coughs> so for tarantula cages, I take anything, anything to be a good tarantula enclosure. So I'll show you the very expensive stuff that you get from a pet store. So these are glass cages that you see at your local pet store. Uh, the T's top ones are 10 gallon tank and the four bottom ones are 5 gallon tank. These are usually quite expensive uh, here in Canada, especially where I live in Quebec, have 15% um, sales tax. So just to give you how expensive tarantula cages are in Quebec, this cage cost me $25, nothing, just the whole cage itself. Not, no uh, cave, no water dish, no substrate, no tarantula, just the pure enclosure without the mesh cover. If you want the mesh cover, that's also 10 to 25 bucks extra. So That's a lot, especially for housing just one tarantula. So what I buy, which serves as a great alternative to housing your tarantulas, are critter keepers. So this are, these are what critter keepers look like. Small plastic, lightweight, durable, very cheap. So I buy these at Walmart for about $10. If you go to a pet store, of course they're going to charge you at least $20 for one. So I get them at Walmart. And of course they only have one color, red, so what I'll have to do is buy label, put labels on them so I can differentiate the spiders. But since I kept spider for 14 years, I know all my 57 T's by heart, so I know which one houses which. So, I'll show you a typical terrestrial setup for a New World species. So, we'll take this example. This is Scarlet, my Mexican red wing, Vaki Palma Smithy. And here she is. So, I would use for substrate, um, you can use the reptile bedding, you know, the stuff that comes in the cube and and you just uh, put water in it and it expands that serves in as a good substrate what I also like to use is um, potting soil and mix it with vermiculite. Vermiculite is this plant additive right here that you can buy at most plant stores what I do is I fill the tank with substrate and I mix in about two or three cups of vermiculite and I just mix it. I use vermiculite because it serves as a great alternative to uh, for humidity. If you want to keep your humidity up, you would use um, 
vermiculite. It's really, really good. But mind you, it's straight vermiculite. It's not re recommended because it's too light of a substrate, and um, your tea won't be able to burrow and may get stressed. So basic setups is our a cave. You always have to have a cave, so the tarantula feels more secure, so it wouldn't feel the need to be very aggressive. And also a water dish. It's also a very, very essential item to have in a tarantula enclosure because tarantulas do drink water from time to time and um, it would help keep the humidity up. So it's just straight water would help keep about maybe 65 to 75 percent humidity. So if you want to get more humidity uh, you would use sphagnum moss, which I'll show in a bit. You, you would buy a spritzer. I use the plant spritzer that I bought from my hardware store for about ten dollars, which look like looks like this. You pump and you spray. Or, especially in winter, and it's snowing right now, you can use a humidifier to help you attain the proper humidity. Okay, so for larger specimens, you know, like Theraphosa blondi, so here's mine, a 10 inch female, this is my largest tarantula. You're good in a 10 gallon tank and pretty much it's the same setup. So, if you're, if you have lack of space like me, you can buy smaller enclosures, like for a blondie, I recommend 10 gallons is the bare minimum. But a lot of tarantulas don't need a lot of space because they're they're blind, so they can't see very far. So let's say here's a tarantula. The spider, which is right here, can't see about that far. That's all they can. So tarantulas don't veer off too far from their burrow. So you can have very small enclosures. It's fine. They don't. Sure, they're a bit more territorial, but they're happy with smaller enclosures because two bit too large enclosures may disorient your tarantula, so that's not good. So I would say for a blondie, a telling ten gallon tank is perfect for it. Five gallon tank it's just a bit cutting it. Okay, so now slings. Slings are a short term for spiderling. So here is my Vermictopus cancerides. This is the Haitian brown bird eater. For slings, you can house them in little pill jars, like about this, and you just fill it up with substrate. When this spider's lifespan reaches about half the size of the enclosure, then that's, a, that's the time to transfer a tea. So eventually, when it's about an inch long, I will transfer it into a solo container. So a solo container is one that you get from the dollar store. And which is like this right here, like so. So I just drill holes on the top, add some substrate and put your tea in. So this is my Chaco Goldeny Gramasola Aria Striata. For larger slings and two juvies, you can have oversized uh, solo containers. This is about a size 15. This houses my Bracky Palma Vagans Mexican Red Rum, so you can see it's pretty big for, for the Vagans until it is about this big and then I'll transfer it to a regular critter keeper. Very simple. And you can buy the stuff that has salad in there. Look at that, perfect tea enclosure. This, this is my Grandma Sola Rosea, the Chilean Rose. This is the Psycho one. So all you do is pretty much drill holes around the, around the corners, around the size of the enclosure. Put your substrate in, put the water dish, put a cave, and put your spider in there, and that's it. Very simple. For old world terrestrials, they're ki they're kind of different. They need much more humidity uh, and substrate. So 
I just got a request from one of my users who wanted me to show my Mega Fabina Rebusum setup. Well, here it is. Here, okay, so here is Sphagnum Moss. You get those at plant stores. Very, very great in keeping the humidity up. So for species like the Aphoropus, the Theraphosa, the Mecca Fabina, love the high humidity from it. So here I have about five inches of substrate in here. So you can see there's potting soil mixing with vermiculite. Vermiculite's right here. I have the cave. I have sphagnum moss. I have the little decorations. Not really necessary. I have a water dish. And the tea made of bare barrel. And you can see the lake is right here. Really cool. Okay, and for old worlds, pretty much the same way. So, I'll show you my OBT setup. Trinachillus moranus. The orange baboon. I have to give water to them. Pretty much the same way. Cave, water dish, substrate, that's about it. And for uh, phosphoryl species, you know, like the cobalt blue, someone else wanted me to show its enclosure. I don't even use caves because uh, these guys burrow. And I'm th fairly disappointed with these species because they don't, they don't like, um, come up very often. So what I do is I take an ordinary key critter keeper, Fill it about three quarters inch of substrate mixing with vermiculite. So here's the vermiculite mixing with potting soil. Always keep a water dish. Cave's not really necessary because you'll be seeing that for most of its life. There's a pet hole. Such a beautiful spider, but very reclusive. It happens, you know.